Hello, everybody. Uh, I was out of the office on Friday last week, so I thought I'd go ahead and do the um the video today. Um, so I've had a lot of questions about uh, setting up payment plans with the IRS or owing money to the IRS. Um, and so I, I kind of already did a call a little bit about or uh, a video a little bit about this. Uh, talking about how to make payments to the IRS, and I kind of mentioned it a little bit in there, but I want to just talk specifically about it today. Um, so if you owe a large amount to the IRS, more than you can pay in one lump sum, um, there's a couple of things at play here. First off, uh, the IRS, um, they pretty much set a materiality level of $10,000. So if you owe less than $10,000, um, they're most likely never going to really come after you. They, they, they may uh, send you to collections and then and, and hire a private collection company to come after you, uh, but they're not going to come after you personally um or the IRS itself isn't going to come after you now regardless of how much you owe you're going to get a few letters so uh the first letter you'll get usually is uh, if we file in October uh usually you get the first letter in about December so it takes them about see October November December takes them about two two and a half months to send out the first letter and the first letter is just a letter saying hey you owe money uh oh and and they also give you the calculation of interest and penalties on that letter uh when we file a tax return we we calculate the interest through uh the day that the taxes are due so so like Interest is due, so you get a, the, there, I guess a real quick explanation here is there's a failure to file penalty, which we can get pretty much everybody out of. That one's really easy, and that one's a more expensive penalty. The next penalty is if you failed to make your prepayments, your estimated tax payments, which is really just an interest rate because you're required to prepay your taxes the year before we file. So like uh, for 2022 taxes, you had to pay for the taxes in 2022, and then we calculate and file in 2023. And so like for 2023's taxes, you have to prepay during the year of 2023, and then we calculate and file in 2024, and so on. So that's the failure to pay penalty, which is really just an interest rate. And then you have regular interest. So they calculate the failure to pay penalty and the interest in, in the first letter. And then they increase the interest since you now haven't paid since October 15th, and it's probably about December 15th at this point. So that's the first letter you get. Just an FYI letter. Uh, then you're probably going to get two or three more monthly letters uh, that sound really scary. They're going to say it's due right away. You have until this date to pay. Uh, and they're probably going to use words like we're going to put a lien on your property and stuff like that. Those are just fear mongering. I have never actually seen the IRS do that. Uh, your state tax, your state tax agency will put liens on you pretty fast. Uh, and that's because they literally just have to walk across the hallway or shoot an email uh, to the lien department and they can put a lien on your property because liens are done at the state level. So in order for the IRS to actually do a lien, they have to contact the state and coordinate all of that. So there's a lot of legal stuff for the federal government to do in order to actually put a lien on your property. So it's really just fear mongering. I've never actually seen the IRS do a lien. They would rather send you to collections and attack your, your credit report because it's that's easier for them. Uh, so the next, like I said, so you'll get that first letter usually two months out. Uh, stating, here's how much you owe, here's your additional tax on interest and penalties, please pay this. And, and then you'll get two or three monthly letters uh, using fear mongering tactics to try to get you to pay. Now, the due dates on all of these letters, they will say this much is due by X date. That is the next date you get charged additional interest that is not like that's going to be the, the date we come after you that's not the date that they're saying that they're going to send you to collections or put a levy it is literally just the date the next time the interest is going to be accumulated uh, it's monthly interest right now the annual interest rate is eight percent uh so 
Now, interest is compounded monthly, so there is actually a pretty complicated formula. You can look it up online and stuff like that and calculate your interest if you want to. But back of the napkin, we're saying uh, 8% uh, annually divided by 12. We're talking like 0.06% on a monthly rate. So if you owe like $1,000, you're going to get charged like 60 bucks in interest a month, something like that or six dollars in interest i got my calculator right here i gotta use it because i'm an accountant so i gotta have my calculator all right so so on a thousand dollars you're going to get charged about six dollars in interest a month right so it's really not it's really not that big of a deal but they use scary letters and that's what the letter says is it says hey you owe a full amount due by the 11th of the next month. And if you don't, and then they use all these scary words and really what it is is you're gonna accumulate additional interest the next month. All right, so that's how the letters work. And then usually after three of those letters, all these letters are automatically generated. They are put into the mailing system with no human input whatsoever. Nobody even touches those letters. They are all automatically generated and automatically mailed. Uh, no human input whatsoever. They're all just using fear mongering to get you to pay. Uh, then after you get those three letters, eventually uh, that you'll probably go six months without hearing a thing from the IRS. If you haven't done anything at that point, the computer system will probably send you an automatically generated letter that says, hey, we have selected a private collection agency and we're sending you to collections. And then probably a month or two after that letter, you're going to then get a letter from the actual collection agency saying, hey, we've received uh, your account from the IRS, you're in collections, please. And, and that you can't even pay the collection agency. They still tell you in that letter you need to pay online at the IRS website. You don't even pay the collection agency. You're still paying the IRS. They've just now hired a collection agency to try to get you to pay. All right, so so that's kind of the process. And then eventually, and I've actually never gotten anyone past that initial collections letter because usually by that point, I've sent letters, we've talked to them. So really, I, am, I don't really know what happens after that collections letter. But my guess is at some point, if you don't make any payments whatsoever, eventually the collection agency will go down the official collection process and what will happen is eventually they will ding your credit report and report that you have an outstanding debt with the IRS on your credit report. Uh, so that way, anytime you go in to get a loan or anything, that's going to pop up as a big red flag. Okay, so that's that's like if you don't do anything, what's going to happen? Okay, so what? How do we treat this? How do we address this? So those first letters, I'm just going to tell you to ignore. Um, and what I want you to do is if you can't afford to pay the entire balance of your taxes due, uh, then what you need to do is just make a payment as best you can. Make, make a large first payment, a couple thousand dollars, whatever you can, 50%, 25%, a large upfront payment. And hopefully that payment can get you below that $10,000 threshold if that's where you're, if you're above that $10,000. If not, that's fine. Just make a, a, as large initial payment as you can and as soon as you can. All right. And so then we will show the IRS that we are trying. We're trying to make this payment as, uh, and pay off this balance due. The next step is start making monthly payments through the online, your online account or the online payment place. So that's the www.irs.gov backslash payments. So I've, I've shown that website in a previous um previous video talking about how to make payments i'm just going to show it again uh so you can see it so this is where you always go to make payments so i'm sharing screen here i'm at the irs.gov website uh there's this tab here up here at the top you can click pay or you can go on one of those but right now so i've gone through all this before but basically you pay now with direct pay that's like an ach debit there's no fees for that but the IRS has, has, must have processed your tax return in order for you to pay here because they want to verify your information. If they haven't processed your tax return yet, you're going to get an error saying uh, identity not verifiable. Uh, you can pay by a third-party payment processor using a debit card. 
Go ahead and repair the credit card again. We talked about this in a previous video, so I'm not going to go any more into detail on that. But this is where you make payments. Okay. So at this point, just start making monthly payments. Make a payment greater than the interest rate, just like you would do with a credit card. So like I said, on $1,000, your monthly interest rate is going to be around 6% or, or $6. So um, make a payment. I would say double your interest rate. So if you owe $5,000, try to make a $500 a month payment. If you owe $10,000, try to make a $10,000 a monthly payment. Do, but do what you can. Even if it's only $25, at least make that $25 payment. It's a couple hundred dollars, do that. Do what you can on a monthly basis. And so then what we're showing to the IRS is we're establishing to the IRS that we've made a large initial payment and we are trying to pay this off. And the IRS is gonna go, okay, let's not waste money on this person by hiring a private collection agency because they are trying to pay their bill. Um, don't start an official payment pro plan with the IRS to begin with. Just make payments on a monthly basis as though you had a payment plan. The reason why we do this is because one, the interest is the same regardless of a payment plan or not. You are charged that 8% interest regardless of being an official payment plan or not. The other thing is, is the reason why I don't want you to do a payment plan right off the bat is a payment plan locks you into a contract with the IRS. When you set up the payment plan, you set up with the IRS saying, hey, I want to do, you select your term. They are very, they're usually pretty open about you selecting the terms. And this is why it's a, this is a trap, all right? This, this is a trap. Um, they are very reasonable with you and let you select all the terms. So I think it's anywhere from one year up to five years or 72 months. And you put in your bank account information and you say how much you want to pay a month. So let's say you say, I'm going to do 72 months at $500. And then there will be some calculation to make sure that would pay off the actual debt at the already that the interest rate you're already paying, regardless of whether you have this payment plan or not. So when you set up this payment plan, you now have officially made a contract with the IRS and you agree to these payment terms. And so then every month, because you gave them your bank account information, they go in and they pull the $500. The moment you don't have that money available to make that payment, the IRS will try to pull it and you will get you know, basically a bad check. They're now gonna charge you a fee for a bad check fee. Then they're gonna start really coming after you because now you have violated a contract that you made with them. They are going to sign a person to your account and they are going to hound you, send you to collections and start doing those liens because you violated your contract now. So we don't like payment plans. We don't like official payment plans because they hold you to the fire. It is a trap. So instead, make your monthly payment as though you were on a payment plan, but let's not sign up for an official payment plan. You make your monthly payment. Normally, that will be enough to keep them from sending you to a private collection agency. But if, that, like I said, that letter, that whole process is usually completely uh, automated. There's no human input on it. So if you are making that monthly payment and they are sending you to a collection agency anyway, because it is, like I said, completely automatic, then we will get a second one, though you'll get a warning from the IRS. You get that warning letter from the IRS that says, hey, we have hired a private collection agency. We are sending it to them. You have another month. Then you're going to get that letter. Of, actually, it's either a month or two. I don't, I don't know exactly how long it is, but it's usually about a month or more. But anyway, you'll get that second letter actually from the collection agency that says, hey, this account's been assigned. When you get that letter, now we go, hey, you know what? In order to keep this out of collections and to keep it from going to our credit report, now we have that payment plan in our back pocket. And it says right on the collections letter, hey, Go to irs.gov backslash payments, log into your account and apply for a payment plan. So that is still available to you at that stage. At that stage, once you've gotten this collection letter, then sign up for the payment plan. Now it keeps it off your credit report. All right. So that, that's kind of my stance on paying off taxes is we want to, we don't, 
we don't want to use that payment plan up front. Just make the payment as best you can on a monthly basis as though you had a payment plan. Wait for that collections letter. And then we sign up for the payment plan to stay out of collections. But this way, we're able to delay any formal payment plan and any, any additional teeth the IRS might have to come after you. Once you are locked into that payment plan, you better not default on it. You better have the cash. Like, like, like I said, you literally get to pick the day it's coming out of your account, the amount it's coming out of your account, and the term of the loan. Like I said, like one to five years. So you know when this payment is coming out of your account, you better have the cash in your account to cover that payment when, when it's going to happen. Uh, like at that point, I would say, you know what, you're better off transferring money from your credit card to your personal bank account to cover the payment when the IRS takes it if you have to, because that's when they're going to really come after you when you default on that one payment. Okay, so that's everything I have to say about that. That is my stance on making tax payments. Uh, quick summary, it's uh, pay as much as you can up front. On your first, on your initial payment, then pay what you can on a monthly basis to get it paid off more than what the interest is going to be. Interest is eight percent annually. There are a lot of interest calculators on on the website or on the internet. There's some great ones. Um, just Google IRS interest calculator. It will tell help you calculate the interest rate. It changes every quarter. Uh, but anyway, large initial payment. Uh, monthly payment greater than the interest rate to get it paid off as soon as you can. Uh, then we have that official payment plan in our back pocket in the event that you are actually sent to collections. Okay, so that's how you pay off large amounts to the IRS if you can't afford a lump sum payment in full right when your taxes are filed. Okay, I hope this video is helpful for everybody. Uh, and tell them I'll probably, I'm, I will try to send one out this uh uh, this next Friday, it might be Monday again. I don't know. But anyway, till next time. Thank you.